Okay, so we're going to redo this calculation showing a faster method that is possible as long as you have a calculator that makes working with parentheses, exponents, and fractions simple. Um, my calculator can of course do this, but my calculator was kind of expensive, so you don't have to buy a calculator so expensive or use a big graphing calculator to do this. You just need a calculator that allows you to enter parentheses, exponents, and divide with fractions and add with fractions simply. And um, most calculators today can do this. Some make it a little more difficult because their display isn't very good. But most of the calculators that I'm talking about are really inexpensive and they have a nice display that allows you to see what you're typing in. What I mean by allows you to see what you're typing in, if I put, for example, parentheses 8 minus 5, close parentheses squared, divided by 5, that all shows up in my screen and I can look there and see if I made a mistake. I can kind of visually check my work before I hit the equal sign. And uh, then it gives me the answer, of course. But the fact that I can view what I'm typing in makes it really easy to avoid mistakes. And that's what you're looking for. And there's a lot of inexpensive calculators that can do that for you. You don't have to have a big expensive one like this one. Okay, but either way, I'm going to show how to do the calculation then where you don't have to then set it up in a table. Because remember, the table was very time consuming. So to avoid that, we can do this test stat calculation much faster using a calculator like this. Okay, so let's just uh, remind ourselves that to do this calculation, we're going to need, of course, um, a set of fractions, and these fractions are going to have expected values and observed values. Now, the observed values are given to us, but the expected values have to be calculated. So just like we saw in the other video, the expected values are based on this formula, just n times p, where n is the sum of the values in your data set here, and p is going to be based on the null hypothesis for each of these categories. So we have these E I P I. The I is just referring to the you know either group one, so that would be E one, group two, E two, group three, E three, and so on and so forth, right? And this course would be P one, P two, P three, depending on what group we're working in. Same with these I's here, and of course there's K of them. K just represents the uh, total number of categories you have. Here we have three categories, so K would be three. Okay, so. EI equals N times PI. Because we have this hypothesis that all these probabilities or proportions are the same, and they have to add up to 1 under our idea of the theory for this section. So if they have to sum up to 1 and they're all the same, it must mean they're each 1 third because 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third makes 1, right? So we know that these are each 1 third. And we also know if we add these numbers together, we get 227. So in other words, if I had 75 plus 74 plus 78, I'll get 227. The PIs are each going to be one-third, so I can just put one of them in here and do this calculation once to get each of these EIs, the expected values. And let's work that out and see what that gives us now. So we will have 227 divided by 3, right? And it's going to give us 75. Point uh, let's just do 667, so we have a few decimal places there. It's 6 repeating, but we'll put 3 decimal places. That should be suffice for this calculation. Okay, so let's go ahead now and go ahead and build up these fractions. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to actually just, you know, literally draw these fractions out. I know I'll have three of them, right? So I'll do, for example, the first fraction squared over this value, right? So I have OI minus EI over EI squared. So I can pencil in these numbers then. I can say, well look, the EIs, the expected values, are each 75.667. So 667, right? And on the bottom I'll have a 75.667. So I just have to then put the observed value in, which is going to be the 75. But we'll do that after. Let's just you know, since this is like automation almost, we'll just put everything in that um, we can already see that goes in that's identical. So each of these fractions are going to be the same basically as far as the EIs go because we said that they're all the same for this problem because of this hypothesis that says the proportions are all the same. So I can just keep penciling these values in, right? And same for the next fraction, of course. So I put my 75.667 in each fraction. And I put my minus sign, right, for each one. Okay, good. Now all I have to do is put in the observed values, and those observed values come right from my table. So I'll have 
75 for the first one, and 74 for the second one, and 78 for the next one. Okay, good. Now I have my values all plugged in, and my formula is out there spelled out for me, so now I just have to go ahead and work out the details, right? And to do that, we're going to use the calculator, and we'll be able to do it much more efficiently than we did it in the other videos. Okay, so here we go. Let's enter in the statement. So I'll use open parenthesis, 75 minus 75.667, close it up, square it, divide by the same 75.667, and then I'll do plus, open parenthesis, 74 minus 75.667, close it up, square it and divide by 75.667 all right and then plus open parenthesis 75 oops 78 pardon me <laughs> so 78 this 78 here minus 75.667 close up the parenthesis square it and divide by 75.667. All right, now once it's all in, I go ahead and hit enter, and there's my answer. So I get the answer approximately that our chi-squared test stat is approximately 0 0.1145. All right, and that's the solution. And we were able to find it much quicker this way. It's a much more efficient way to work it out than to have to create that table. So basically we're letting the calculator do all the crunching of the number behind the scenes so that we can get to this test stat much quicker, much more efficiently than we would be doing it um, you know, by hand creating that table. However, I did use the table in several of the videos for the main reason that not everyone has a good calculator that allows them to do the calculations quickly or they don't have the confidence to enter it all in and be sure that they don't make a mistake. So for that reason, they want to take their time on it. If you're that type of person, you want to do it slowly, that's fine. But just remember, this is a lot faster and so under the time constraint of a test or something, you might want to have this method in your back pocket, which is just really just using the formula as you see it, but allowing your calculator to do a lot of the subtraction, squaring, and division all at once. That way, you don't have to sit there and work it out piece by piece. All right, so hopefully that helps you, and hopefully your calculator is good enough to allow you to do that.